agent is a thing that uh, a human being is able to delegate tasks to, and over time, the tasks to which you are, the, the tasks that you're delegating to these agents are becoming increasingly complex. And how Kevin Scott, Microsoft CTO, defines an AI agent is something we should all probably pay attention to, as Microsoft has turned its efforts to an even broader mission beyond becoming the co-pilot company, to leading the way in building the agentic web. Big ideas are what we expect from the Build Keynote, but turning big ideas into practical products and tools that will truly change how we work is the challenge. So in between the buzz and hype, what were the most impactful announcements or product explanations of Build 2025 day one? I'm going to run down my top five picks. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I advise smaller businesses on how to get the best from AI, including Microsoft's AI technologies. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. How does Copilot get trained on your data? This is one of the questions that has been on repeat since Microsoft 365 Copilot got announced. And not just from the perspective of organizations wanting to secure their private data, but also from the consideration that a one-size-fits-all model maybe doesn't make the most sense to giving the most tailored answers. And now, Microsoft is offering a solution for those who want responses not just personalized through runtime contextual retrieval augmented generation using the semantic index, but actual fine tuning based on your data. This is a big deal. I mean, at some level, this is about really not just using Copilot, but it's about tuning Copilot for every customer, every enterprise, every firm. But certainly at first, it won't be every firm as when this releases in an early access program in June, only companies with 5,000 or more Microsoft 365 Copilot seats will be eligible. And even if you fit that bill, you need to have use cases that align with the capabilities of Copilot tuning. And this is about agents, not about the core Microsoft 365 Copilot product. So the example given was you might be a consulting firm with business across many different verticals. And so you might have agents that are fine-tuned against resources for those industries. The key point here is that the fine-tuning is an intuitive low-code process connected with Copilot Studio instead of a more complex approach using different skills elsewhere like Azure AI Foundry. Our takeaway should be the acknowledgement that even in scenarios where Copilot-like tooling is optimal, rather than say building your own AI application, there is benefit to tuning the model for a specific purpose that goes beyond just RAG scope and instruction engineering. This is perhaps a slight change of direction for Microsoft. First, we had co-pilots. Then, we got agents. But now, everyone's focus seems to have shifted to the value of teams of agents. And this multi-agent orchestration is now coming to low-code makers in Copilot Studio. Today, we are making it easier to build even more complex multi-agent workflows in Copilot Studio using orchestration. Uh, take something like onboarding a new hire. And it's actually a pretty complex process, actually. It involves agents from facilities, finance, legal, and each with their own expertise and workflows, right? And so you can bring them all together and everything moves faster and the experience is better for everyone. That multi-agent orchestration right in Copilot Studio. Directly from Copilot Studio, we will be able to select existing agents built across a range of services and add them as agentic tools to another agent to add specialist capabilities. We can pass conversation history between agents and orchestrate a flow automatically, much in the same way we might have a multi-agent conversation in Copilot chat. One of the reasons I'm most excited about this is that by using agents as tools within agents, it's easier to follow a philosophy where building an agent is about creating a narrow specialist rather than an all-knowing HAL type machine. Being able to easily demonstrate and evidence this in Copilot Studio will, in my opinion, amplify the potential to make even slightly more complex agent creation a maker rather than pro endeavor. But we shall see. 
What isn't clear here is whether declarative agents built in the context of Microsoft 365 Copilot and with access to the full semantic index will be within the scope of this type of handoff, as having a specialist assistant agent that sits on top of all the M365 data easily would be a real benefit. With Azure AI Foundry now hosting more than 1900 models, the problem you face is not easily accessing a suitable model, but distilling such a large selection of potential models down to the one that is the best to use for whatever it is you need. For a long time, when asked what model does Microsoft 365 Copilot use, the answer has been that there isn't simply one model, that in the background, based on the context of what you're trying to do, a model will be selected that is best for your needs. Diehard fans of Claude or Gemini might ponder the objective reality of that response, but on a technical level, that is what's going on. And now it seems Microsoft is going to bring a little of this tooling to users of Azure OpenAI models. Our new model router will automatically choose the best OpenAI model for the job. No more mo sort of those mo you know, manual model selections. But on top of this, we are also going to be getting Azure AI Foundry model selection directly in Copilot Studio. The GPT-40 response model is selected by default, but I can choose other models via AI Foundry. So whether you're building complex AI apps using Azure AI Foundry, or you're a low-code maker in Copilot Studio, better options to tailor your tool through model selection is a big deal that should lead to more opportunity for better tailored outputs. Do you remember the rather quick ridicule last year when HR services company Lattice announced a new company direction giving AI-based digital workers seeming parity with humans? Perhaps Microsoft missed that. In the future, we believe every organization is going to have people and agents working together. But I doubt this foray into the concept will be greeted with similar pushback, as the concept of intra-agent ID isn't so much about making agents equivalent to humans, it's about making security and governance of what they are doing as understandable and manageable as that of humans. And that means the systems that you are today using ubiquitously for things like identity, uh, management of endpoints, security, will need to extend to agents as well. The fact is that in the broader Microsoft community, there continue to be serious concerns about governance tooling keeping pace with AI and agentic innovation. And so wrapping these agentic tools in capabilities that are already well known and understood makes a great deal of sense, both from the perspective of efficiency on Microsoft's part, but also to shallow the learning curve of the IT teams running the systems these new tools are operating on. This new feature is an announcement that will get rolled out in part over the next six months and extend across Azure AI Foundry, Copilot Studio, Security Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot, and third-party agents. The real wow announcement for me in this keynote was a little counterintuitive, as very often we just think of Windows as a place where the outputs of AI work and run, rather than at the centre of new capabilities and innovations. But the demo of Windows MCP, or Model Context Protocol, not only showed off the new life Windows can have in the AI age, but is also an immensely powerful demonstration of the utility of this new AI-connected protocol for making things happen, whether on your desktop or in the cloud. Having an agent in Visual Studio Code connect with MCP in Windows Subsystem for Linux to provision a new distro, set up a web project, and then to connect with MCP in Figma to bring across a design into that web project, all with just minimal instructions, looks very much like the fully integrated future that was part of the early promise of the AI revolution. But going on beyond this, also announced was a new tool called NL Web that is designed to allow those with websites to essentially publish an MCP compatible layer on top of whatever their web app does to allow agents to access and use those resources. This is different to Kua, which is about AI's visual understanding of the layout of a page or app to enable it to essentially do RPA on the fly. This is a standard that can be plugged in so that any web-based compatibility can be accessed similarly to how you would with an API now. I would guess that this approach has less overhead and less room for error. 
And perhaps this is the start of an answer to how publishers of content remain relevant in the age of AI by allowing them to define how agents can work with their data and capabilities to funnel users into actions or uses that are mutually beneficial, while the AI layer remains a middleman, just like the ISP was for the website age. From asking if Microsoft 365 Copilot is the right product for your business, to working out how agentic AI can amplify the ways you delight your customers, there are lots of questions swirling around AI strategy and AI adoption for all businesses right now. And while the technology is important, understanding how all of the pieces fit together in a way that's relevant to your business and your people is even more so. If you need an advisor or a personal or team AI coach to start or support your journey, I offer services to help you. I work with small and medium-sized organizations that are looking to maximize the benefits of AI in a safe and responsible way. And I'd be happy to connect with you to understand your situation and outline how I can assist you to succeed with this technology. Take a look at the links down below to find out more and to get in touch. The last demo of the keynote was about research. And not the researcher agent type of research, but hard science, the type of problems that Sam Altman told us AI would have solved by now. And it seems like Microsoft is tired of waiting for that and has built its own solution. An agent focused on scientific discovery makes a lot of sense. The capabilities of models like O3 probably aren't that taxed by summarizing your emails, and we need to find ways to really push reasoning models to their limits. Kevin Scott said it best. The models are more powerful than what we collectively are using them for at the moment. And like one of my big challenges to all of you this year at Build is to just sort of think about how you can set your ambition level to 11, uh, like to try to target some things that are you think are barely possible right now in terms of reasoning capability. And clearly, Microsoft is drinking its own Kool-Aid with a demo of using this new tool to develop a coolant that doesn't rely on forever chemicals. Microsoft Discovery seems like a good name, but after this roundup, perhaps what we're describing is Microsoft the next generation. So these were my highlights from the Build Keynote. What were yours and what sessions will you be catching? Let me know in the comments. As always, some of the availability and timelines on announcements like these are somewhat ambiguous, but I think it's fair to say that in vision at least, the message from Microsoft is becoming much more coherent. The narrative around all these different AI features in different places is coming together to allow these tools to work together in a way that wasn't clear 12 months ago. Will it all work as described or arrive on time or be sold to us without unexpected costs being thrown in? Of course not. But if Microsoft started doing all that, what would I make videos about? Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.